Okay, this slide sort of kicks off a, uh, a, a sort of a variation on a themes uh, subset of, of uh, clips. And I wanted, for, th for those of you who've been around in distribution channels a long time like I have, to sort of reflect back and think about your specific channel's uh, life cycle history. Uh, when I first got into distribution channels, it was in the early 70s, primarily in the uh, printing paper, industrial papers, uh, floor covering, janitorial supply, distribution channels. And um, in those days, uh, you know, things have been growing nicely. You know, we were probably right about here. Uh, we had a lot of inflation in the 70s, thanks to oil embargoes and so forth. But we still had um, exclusive product lines. So up here, we had, um, we had lines where we were the exclusive guy. And uh, <coughs> in 1970, uh, three, four, uh, there was a, 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 in a sense, really a, a, a false induced shortage where uh, supply was a lot less than demand. And so uh, we made record amounts of, of profit those two years. Of course, in 1975, we had a huge bust. Um, I would say in those days, about 20% of the volume were uh, sort of football, commodity, price sensitive kind of items. <coughs> Maybe 80% of the the volume was, was uh you know, just was less price. People didn't worry about it. Um, and if you you sort of fast forward, think about all the supply chain uh, milestones that I covered in a previous uh, clip, uh, where you know Walmart came along and got strong, and uh, channels started to consolidate, and uh, business models changed for the for the drug and the hospital supply, et cetera, distribution channels. And we get to the point today where maybe 20% of the items. Uh, are what I would call supply chain brands. In other words, they're private label, uh, and it's uh, they've they've. You, if you go to Walmart, for example, 40% of their sales are on store brands like Equate, where you would look at a bottle of Listerine, 50 ounces, and right next to it is a bottle of Equate, 50 ounces, and you turn the labels around and look at the ingredients; they're exactly the same, but Equate is 80% less, and then. Uh, everything else, you know, is, is, uh, has become commodities in the sense that most, most distributors will agree today that if they do have brands they're selling, their customers can buy that same brand from two, three, four or more uh, suppliers. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just gotten very competitive. The, the items that nobody really asks about, you sell so little of um, that the fact that you have an exclusive on it doesn't really sort of matter. Um, and what's sort of subtle but very powerful is down here is we were taking products to market and manufacturers were coming out with new products and extending their lines. Uh, whereas today, we see very big customers saying, I want to change the way I'm buying. I want to consolidate my suppliers. I want to pick one particular supplier and, and have them outsource. I want to outsource uh, you know, internal replenishment activities to them. So you have the whole integrated sole supply kind of trend. So the, the power is shifted to the end user, and the end user is, be, is, is looking for a next level of economic value added as opposed to, gee, uh, you know, can I find some product that's on allocation? So let's go to the next slide and sort of summarize these key points. Thanks.